Good morning, everyone. Uh, first off, we'd like to welcome you to our virtual open house for Julie Bayou School in Akron here. Um, certainly, thank you for being us, with us uh, this morning. Um, unfortunately, yes, we are doing this virtually uh, today. Uh, we would love to have you here in the building, uh, exploring our environments and talking about the services that we have to offer. Um, but certainly due to, uh, due to the pandemic and COVID right now, um, our visitor policy is certainly refraining uh, any visitors from coming into the school building. Uh, but I do hope that you'll find a wealth of information in today's presentation. Um, so first off, what I would like to do, go ahead and provide you with a, a brief introduction about myself. Um, so my name is Jason Weinich. I'm the principal here at Judy Bayard Akron. I have been with the organization for uh, over 11 years now. Um, I had first started with Judy Bayard School at our Lindhurst campus as a teacher, uh, moved into the assistant principal role. And then as we were opening up our uh, campus here in Akron, uh, I navigated down here to be the principal of our Akron campus, uh, which happens to be the second uh, campus that we had open uh, for Julie Burger Schools. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy to be with you all uh, today, and I look forward to sharing more with you about our services, our supports, um, and our school environment uh, in general. Uh, please know that uh, as we conclude today's presentation, uh, at any point in the process that you may have a question, uh, a concern, uh, feel free to reach out to us, uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, here at the school. You can see on the slide here, uh, my contact information is present there for you. Uh, feel free to email me, feel free to call me, and I would be happy to assist you uh, along the process or answer any questions that you might have. Okay, I apologize for that. All right. Now, as we navigate today's agenda, uh, one thing that I would like to um, remind you of is our question and answer uh, feedback. Um, certainly at any point uh, during this presentation, any question that you may have um, you know, regarding the information that I'm sharing with you, or if you have an additional question about our campus, about our services, feel free to use the Q&A uh, option uh, within Zoom here. Uh, please go ahead and type in your questions uh, in that section there. Uh, and then at the conclusion of today's presentation, I will certainly make it a point uh, to answer any questions that are in that Q&A section of Zoom. So certainly, again, at the bottom of your screen uh, with the Q&A option, uh, go ahead and use that to type in any questions that you may have. Um, but for today's open house, uh, we do have a big agenda. Um, we're going to talk about our environments. We're going to talk about our services and supports, uh, as well as all the logistical uh, information that you need to know, such as tuition, such as time to the school day. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of information presented to you, um, but I do hope that it is very beneficial uh, in helping you understand Julie Bayou School and the services that we provide. So to start off, I, I do want to recognize our mission. Our mission is very important to us. It's very important to uh, what we do with our students each and every day. Uh, our mission has been uh, an example of who we are for over, over 59 years, um, starting at our Lindhurst campus. And our mission is simply that we nurture and empower students with special learning needs. Uh, as a Catholic school rooted in the educational principles of the Sisters of Notre Dame, we welcome diverse faith traditions. And so some important critical elements of that mission. Yes, we are here uh, 
uh, for children with special needs. We are a school dedicated to providing strategies and supports to students who need it the most. Um, we're also a Catholic school. We're a faith-based school that allows us to do something special within our school community. It allows us to interact in a way that uh, provides empathy, that provides compassion, um, but that provides a, a faith-driven education that allows our students to become well-rounded uh, individuals. And then moving on to our core values. You can see our four core values here, uh, such as commitment, collaboration, compassion, and courage. Um, but the one core value that I do want to point out and just talk briefly on, because it is the most important one to me, and, and that's courage. Uh, oftentimes, we have students who transition to us, whether it's the third grade year, fifth grade year, or starting with us at the very beginning in kindergarten. But sometimes our students are transitioning from a setting that was difficult for them. Maybe there was a lack of academic supports or social supports, or maybe that there were difficulties with building peer relationships. And oftentimes we see those students come into a setting with a, uh, a lack of courage. They've been broken down a little bit. And one of the great things about Julie Berger School is the, our ability to instill that courage back into the students. We want our students to be able to say, I can, I can do this. I can walk into the classroom, I can take on tasks that would have been a struggle for me, that I would have shied away from and, and, and take it full speed on and be proud of their outcomes. Um, so one of our goals uh, beyond providing the academics, beyond providing the social development, one of our goals is to help build courage within all of our students. Now, a little bit of a, a background uh, with the organization right now. You know, as I mentioned, um, when I was introducing myself, I talked about how I came down to Appen when we were opening our second campus. Um, so that was back in the fall of 2017 when Appen first opened. And when we opened, we started with kindergarten through second grade. And every year after, uh, we continue to build our model to, our, to the JB model, which is a kindergarten through eighth grade model. And I'm happy to say that today we serve kindergarten through eighth grade at our Akron campus. Um, but the growth does not stop there. Um, we're very excited to announce the opening of our Westlake campus, which is slated to open in August of 2000, uh, 2001, uh, which is just right around the corner. So there's a lot of great exciting developments and you can certainly read more about that on our school website. Um, but then, yeah, the, the growth doesn't stop there either. Um, certainly there are plans in place for a fourth campus. And uh, once the, the, the growth is complete in Northeast Ohio, we are aiming and we, our goal is to serve over 700 students uh, throughout Northeast Ohio. Okay, uh, a couple things specifically about JB Akron here. Um, and do know that anytime that I reference uh, JB, uh, that's, that's our, our, our shortened name for Judy Billion. Um, so we talk a lot about JB, the JB way, JB school. Um, we're certainly proud uh, to be a JB school. Um, but in regards to the Akron campus, as well as, as our other campuses that we have in Lyndhurst and Westlake, um, In-house therapies are part of the programming. Uh, we provide speech therapy, occupational therapy, music and art therapy uh, for all of our students, uh, as well as provide BCBA services uh, within our school setting. Now the BCBA services are there to help support the students as well as the teachers within the classroom. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in this presentation. Since Akron uh, is our second campus and we had opened uh, just four years ago in 2017, um, certainly we're still growing. Uh, as I mentioned, we have navigated from serving kindergarten through second grade, our very first year of opening, to now, going, uh, now serving our full model of kindergarten through eighth grade. 
Um, so there are openings across many of our grade levels, um, but yet there are a couple grade levels that are at a wait list. And uh, certainly that is something that you know, we'd be happy to talk about and help you navigate further as you, as you venture along this process. Um, again, this is year four of our developments here in Akron. Uh, we are a tight-knit community. Uh, one of the greatest things that I do love about JB community is, is, is really is a sense of family. It's not only a sense of family with the students and the faculty and staff within the building, but it's a sense of family with all of our parents as well, too. It's very important uh, to us, and we know that we only have the success that we do have with your partnership in this process. Um, and so in the end of all that, um, it really is a family. Uh, we're dedicated to each other and we look for our families to, you know, enrich ourselves uh, within our, our model here in Akron. Okay. A little bit about our student body. Uh, so, as I mentioned today, we are serving kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, and the general makeup of our school allows for students to come from a wide geographic range. Uh, so we actually serve over 35 different school districts just here at the Akron campus. Um, so we are pulling from a number of geographic locations. And that's actually a very important reason why we, we do keep a tight-knit community uh, that, that has a family feel. We do know that we have families coming from all different areas. And so we do a number of different uh, activities, extracurriculars um, to help you know, really mold and shape that family that we, we look to build here. Um, as a faith-based school, um, it is important to recognize that we do serve a variety of student faiths. Um, if you look at our current student body, uh, it's about 40% Catholic and 60% of other faiths. Um, so it is a, uh, and certainly a range of different faiths within our building here, um, but that is something that we, we are blessed to have. Um, and that, you know, when, when it comes to a religion programming, it allows us to really focus on building the whole child, helping that child become a strong community member uh, within, within our broader community. In terms of the uh, you know, specific disabilities that we are working with within our school setting here, um, it ranges. Um, first and foremost, we are a school with, for children who have more mild to moderate uh, disabilities. And so that does include moderate to high functioning autism. Children with specific learning disabilities, such as in reading or math or writing. Students with attention needs, such as ADHD, ADD and anxiety. Uh, students with more specific learning disabilities, such as dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia. Students with sensory processing disorders. Um, but know that this list is not all inclusive. Um, we, we do serve a, uh, a wide range of needs uh, when it comes to our mild to moderate uh, range of student body. Um, but it is important to, to recognize and focus that you know, we're here to, to dedicate ourselves to the academic developments of our students as well as the social developments of our students. Now we're gonna start getting into some of the details of our school environment. Um, and one of the most important things that I do want to recognize is how do we construct our academic groups? And so one of the most, one of the, one of the first things first I would like to explain is how we teach our small group environments. Um, we have a combination of both small group and whole group instruction. Um, within our small group instruction, which is no more than an eight to one ratio, um, it's actually no more than a six to one ratio in kindergarten through second grade. Um, but starting at third grade, we do bump our numbers up a little bit in the classroom. Um, and it does become uh, an eight to one ratio within our small group settings. And for those small groups, we teach, we teach small groups in math, reading, writing, and word study. Now, we work in grade bands within our environment here. Kindergarten through second grade is a grade band. Third and fourth is a grade band. Fifth and sixth is a grade band. And then seventh and eighth is a grade band. 
And so what we do at each one of those grade bands, you have a set of intervention specialists. Uh, it's important to note that every grade level has two intervention specialists uh, as the core teachers for the class. But when we look at the grade bands, and we're gonna use the third and fourth grade uh, as the example. So between the third and fourth grade classes, we have a total of four intervention specialists who are the classroom teachers, who are your support, your child support team uh, throughout the course of every day. And so between those four intervention specialists, we take our pool of third and fourth grade students and disperse them into four different groups. And those four different groups are broken down by ability level. And so for reading, for math, writing, and word study, there are gonna be different groupings that are all built around your child's developmental level when it comes to that subject area. And so for math, we have four different groups. There's a group that is at grade level, we have a group that is slightly below grade level, and then we have two other groups that are in need of further remediation. They may, they may be uh, a whole grade level or more uh, behind. And so what that does is allows us to use the appropriate program, the appropriate curriculum uh, with our students that meet the, the developmental levels uh, within those academic areas. Certainly a major part of our instruction uh, is addressing the social competencies, helping further develop, de develop our students' social abilities uh, inside and outside of the classroom. And so there's a number of ways that this is addressed. Um, first and foremost, our speech pathologist within our setting plays a vital role in this process. Obviously, they are the experts when it comes to social development. And so they are certainly on the front lines of, of uh, this area of development. And so they'll provide direct therapies for the students who need uh, direct therapy within social development. So if your child is working on social pragmatic goals uh, within the IEP, uh, certainly the therapist will be addressing them in the direct therapy setting. But then this therapist also goes into the classroom as well throughout the course of the week. And one of our main goals is always to generalize skill sets from one environment to another. And so the therapist is striving to take what they're teaching in the uh, therapy setting and carry it over into the classroom setting. And so you'll see the therapist in the classroom setting supporting the students uh, with those social competencies as well. In addition to that, uh, on a weekly basis, the speech path uh, pathologists go into the classroom setting to do a whole group social lesson with every grade level. So starting at the kindergarten level, going all the way to the eighth grade level, uh, uh, once a week, the students are receiving a social lesson that is done through the speech pathologist in conjunction with our intervention specialists that are in the classroom. And then another component of addressing the social competencies is the lunch bunch program. And so we have students who work together during their lunchtime uh, that is guided by the speech pathologist to again, work on those social skills, making sure that we are uh, developing appropriate relationships, meaningful relationships, working on those repair tactics when a relationship needs to be repaired. Um, so there's a, a number of different elements that the speech pathologist works on uh, to support all of our students within, this, within our school setting. So a little bit about our classroom environments, the physical environment that our students um, are here, here, you know, Monday through Friday. Um, one, they're all technology ready environments. Um, a couple of examples of this is every classroom has a, what's called an active panel. Um, what it is, is it really looks like a glorified TV, um, but it is a huge piece of equipment uh, that is embedded within our teacher's instruction. Uh, what it does, it allows us to provide that visual 
uh, to the students during any type of instruction. Um, you'll see our teachers utilizing these active panels consistently throughout the course of the day for all their academic areas. Um, but it also allows for great collaboration within the classroom as well. Um, certainly, you know, building onto that social piece, our teachers are very mindful about what they need to be doing in the classroom to continue to build that social development. And the active panel actually is a, is a vital tool when it comes to that because it does allow for great collaboration to happen within the school setting. Um, also, all of our students use Chromebooks uh, starting from kindergarten through eighth grade. Uh, each student is issued a Chromebook uh, for their instruction. And that looks different uh, from the kindergarten through fourth grade level through um, in comparison to the fifth through eighth grade. Um, we have a number of different programs that we use that are supplemental programs to our curriculum, um, such as a program called Moby Max. Uh, it's, a pro it's an online program uh, that uh, allows for reinforcements for skill sets in reading and math and science and social studies. Uh, so you'll see our students utilizing those programs throughout the course of the day on their Chromebooks. Uh, in our upper grades, we are a Google school. And so fifth through eighth grade is uh, learning how to use Google Classroom as a platform to navigate their instruction. Uh, Google Classroom is a tool that is used virtually across high school uh, levels. And so what we're doing is we're preparing our students, our older students, uh, to be ready for the high school setting and to be knowledgeable about the tools that are going to be uh, going to allow them to be successful at the high school level. Uh, within our settings, uh, as you explore our physical spaces, there's a lot of sensory integrations uh, built in within our classroom settings. Um, it allows our students to take the appropriate sensory breaks uh, when needed throughout the course of the day. It allows our teachers to give the appropriate input uh, to students so that way students can uh, appropriately manage their bodies. We know that some students' internal motors are running a little high or they may be running a little low. And so certainly the teachers use different strategies and do uh, different sensory integrations to help uh, help that student adjust their body and you know, be able to increase their attention and focus on task. A number of different alternative workplace uh, spaces throughout the classrooms. Um, we know that within our school environment, a traditional uh, desk in a row is not going to work for us. Uh, our students need movement throughout the course of the day. They need opportunities to be comfortable. They need opportunities to recognize what their body needs to be successful within the school environment. Uh, so you'll see a number of different alternative workspaces such as standing desks, um, students are able to work on clipboards in a beanbag chair, uh, students who are able to work in quiet uh, environments uh, during whether it's whole group instruction or small group instruction. Uh, so a number of different opportunities are provided to the students to help support their needs. And then finally, the makeup of our physical spaces. Every grade level has a main classroom and a resource room. The students see both of these workspaces as their classroom. Um, but the main classroom and the resource room kind of serve uh, different purposes. Any time that a class is working as a whole group or maybe so something such as science or social studies, they're working together in that main classroom. The main classroom is a larger room. Uh, it's set up to uh, hold the entire uh, student, uh, the class student body. But then we have a resource room. And as I mentioned before, for some of our core academics, we break up into small, group, uh, small groups. And when we do that, one of those small groups goes off into the resource room for their instruction. What is the resource room? It is essentially a smaller classroom. It's a classroom that is built to hold that small group setting. Um, so our resource rooms have the same technology supports, uh, within the classroom, they have the same sensory integrations, they have the same opportunities, but it does allow for a, uh, one of our small groups to go off into a quiet workspace uh, as we work into those small group settings. Now, 
Now moving on to our curriculums and what we utilize within JB schools. Um, so whether you're at the Lindhurst campus, Akron campus, or the uh, upcoming Westside campus, uh, we have made decisions on the curriculums that we do use that we know are most beneficial for our student body. And as I mentioned before, uh, since we do break our students up into small groups that are based on abilities, we do have to have a number of different curriculums that fit those different ability levels. And so you can see on the screen here, there's uh, a number of different programs that I mentioned. Starting off with reading, uh, you can see that reading uh, consists of a Reading Street program, My Sidewalks on Reading Street, the Wilson Reading System, Wilson Foundations, and Words Their Way. So a number of different programs that are all there in place for certain needs. We're going to use the Reading Street program for that academic group that is at or above grade level. It is a faster paced program. It, is, it has more content built into it um, because we know the students are capable of handling that level of content. Um, but then for our students who need more remediation in the area of reading, they may be participating in the My Sidewalks on Reading Street program. This is a slower paced program. It is much more structured. It is not as busy. Um, and so it, it certainly meets the needs of students who just, who need that slower pace, who needs that more remediation and a focus on the core concepts within reading. And then for our students who need further remediation, uh, such as students who may have a, a diagnosis of dyslexia, uh, we utilize a program called the Wilson Reading System. I, this is a very multi-sensory approach, but a very, very systematic approach to teaching reading. Um, and with the Wilson Reading System, we do have certified teachers on staff. Um, we have some intervention specialists who are certified in Wilson uh, to teach that program. Our kindergarten through second graders all use the Wilson Foundation program. And then Words Their Way is a word building program uh, that many of our students do participate in. And then the same idea for math. You can see a number of different programs. My Math is gonna be a program that is more robust, faster pace, while Number Worlds is uh, a slower paced program, uh, more structured uh, for the students who need it. In the area of social development, we use what's called the social thinking curriculum to guide a lot of what we do in the classrooms uh, in regards to social development. Uh, we use programs called the Unthinkables as well as the Autism Picture Stories. In religion, we use a program called Christ Our Life. Science is a Nancy Larson science program. Uh, within writing, we do handwriting without tears and typing without tears as well too. Uh, starting at the kindergarten level, we do work on typing. Um, it does become a very important and vital uh, piece, a vital tool in our kids' education. Um, we know that um, with some of our students' fine motor skills, uh, handwriting can become a very problematic and um, restrictive approach to conveying the written expression. And so that, you know, it's very important that we continue to build those typing skills. So those students who are gonna rely on word processing uh, has that capability as they move into the third, fourth, and fifth grade level. We also use a number of different assessments uh, within our environment too. Uh, some of these assessments are periodic. Uh, some of these assessments are ongoing. Um, but you know, what is the point of assessments? It is for us to better understand students and it's there for us to help us make decisions on our instruction and you know, how we develop that pathway for your student from point A to point B within math, within reading and so forth. And some of the examples of, this, of the assessments that we do use is the developmental spelling assessments or the DSAs. Uh, those are conducted twice a year. Uh, qualitative reading in inventories or QRIs. Uh, those assessments are in place to help us better understand comprehension and reading fluency. 
the measures of academic progress or MAP assessments is a very important tool that we do use uh, three times a year, once in the fall, winter, and then again in the springtime. Uh, that assessment is vital to us because it certainly helps us understand uh, the strengths and weaknesses of a student and guide our everyday instruction uh, with, the stu with the students. A celebrated reader is in place to better help understand reading comprehension. And then obviously there's a number of uh, curriculum, both informal and formal assessments that are done on a regular basis. Um, before I move into the services offered, I know there were a couple individuals that may have joined us um, in the middle of the presentation. I do want to just remind everyone that certainly if you do have a question, please use the Q&A uh, option uh, within Zoom. You'll find that at the bottom of your screen. Uh, use that Q&A section to type in any questions that you may have. And then once we get to the conclusion of the presentation, I will go ahead and answer any questions that are present in that Q&A. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the services that are built within our environment here. Uh, again, as I mentioned, every grade level, every classroom has two intervention specialists as the classroom teachers. Um, they're intervention specialists or special education teachers, uh, but intervention specialists is the uh, terminology that is certainly used today. Uh, each campus has a BCBA on staff. Um, these BCBAs are in place to help recognize the strategies and supports uh, that need to be in place to help with student behaviors. Now, it's important to recognize that we're not a behavioral school, uh, but obviously when there are academic or social frustrations uh, in place, there are gonna be behaviors that come from that, that stems from that. And so we do want to help support that and rectify those, uh, those needs. And so the, BC, the BCBA uh, is there to help uh, strategically put in place some of those strategies, as well as work with the teachers on implementing those strategies and continue to evaluate how those strategies are working out. Uh, as I mentioned, speech and occupational therapy uh, as a part of our setting. Uh, each campus has two speech uh, therapists and then an occupational therapist to work on fine motor skills as well as sensory skills as well too. Uh, music therapy, we have a music therapist on staff. Uh, each, each class participates in music therapy once a week. Uh, each class also participates in art therapy once a week as well. Uh, the art th therapist also does individual art therapy for students who need it. So maybe a student is having a difficult period of time. Maybe there's something happening at home that the, the child is struggling with. Or maybe there's a peer relationship uh, that the child is struggling to kind of navigate through. Our, our art therapist is there to help provide that personalized support through art therapy uh, to help that you know, that, that student navigate whatever that, you know, that circumstance may be. Uh, with a school nurse on staff, um, certainly for all the bumps and bruises that happen throughout the course of the day, uh, as well as, you know, if there's any uh, medicine that needs to be administered throughout the course of the day, uh, a school nurse is in place to provide that, um, that support. Uh, we're happy to say that we have Sydney, on staff. Sydney is our therapy dog. Uh, she's been with us uh, for just about three years now uh, here at our Akron campus. Um, Sydney is a, uh, a very uh, vital part of our, our faculty and staff here. Uh, she provides a lot of warm, caring support to the students who need it um, during, this, during the course of the school day. We do have an aftercare program uh, for students who need it after school. That runs from 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, so certainly if a, if a family is not able to be there during our dismissal time, uh, know that we do have an aftercare program that would be available. And then there's additional extracurriculars as well. Um, I will say this school year looks a little bit different with extracurriculars um, due to COVID. Um, but a, uh, a typical school year embeds things such as a cross country team to uh, here at the Akron campus. We have a, a Snapology program, uh, which is a Lego building program that we bring in. 
Um, so there, there are a number of different opportunities throughout the course of the year um, that we, we look forward to kind of continuing uh, as we move into next school year. On the screen here, you'll kind of see just a, a general breakdown of a, a day in the life for a student who attends JB. Um, but in summary, you know, when our students walk in the morning, uh, our doors open at 740, but the school day officially starts at eight o'clock. Um, so when the students come between 740 and eight o'clock, they have a, a, an opportunity to either go to a walking club uh, to walk with their peers, or have, you know, do some independent reading in our quiet zone. Um, in the morning, we do have a big emphasis on uh, executive functioning skills. Uh, we know that a lot of our students struggle with the organization and planning development of their, uh, of their day. And the morning times are a very important piece that our teachers work on with our students, helping with that organization, helping them learn how to plan for the day, um, but the same thing at the conclusion of the day as well. Uh, much of our heavy academics, uh, reading, writing, and math are oftentimes built in the morning. Uh, we know that our, uh, our students function the best in the morning time. Um, and then as we head into the afternoons, you'll see some of our secondary academics, a lot of our specials, and so forth. Um, throughout the course of the day, it's important to note that you know, with the intervention specialists being the classroom teachers for the students, um, they are with them from the time that they walk in in the door uh, in the morning to the time they walk out of the door, the door in the afternoon. And that's important to recognize because we know that our students need supports from an academic and a social developmental standpoint. Um, but just think about that ongoing support that the student receives um, from that, that individual that knows them best to be able to implement those strategies consistently throughout the course of the day from eight o'clock to 2.45. Some uh, just general facts about our school environment. Um, just again, recognizing that you know, our intervention specialists are with your child uh, seven hours a day uh, from start to finish of the school day. Our class sizes is a makeup of 12 students for kindergarten through second grade um, and a makeup of at most 16 students in grades three through eight. Um, and that means that's a ratio of one to six or one to eight with two intervention specialists within the setting. Um, it's important to note that uh, just about all of our students uh, receive support from either the John Peterson or the Autism Scholarship that's available. And we'll talk more about that uh, in a moment. A hundred percent, we're very happy to say that hundred percent of our uh, families participated in distance learning uh, when we were all mandated to move into distance learning this past spring. Uh, certainly it was a difficult time for everyone, uh, but we were, we were excited and happy to see the outcomes uh, that we were able to achieve during that time. Uh, we, the, with our families that currently attend JB, 100% uh, of our families do recommend JB to our schools. Um, you know, again, we're a very family-oriented environment, close-knit, um, and it's important that, you know, no matter who it is within the building, whether it's the the intervention specialist, the art therapist, uh, main office secretary, uh, we're all here dedicated to the students of JB. And then finally, 100% of our students have either graduated or are on track to graduate uh, high school. Uh, we're very happy to see the outcomes uh, that we do see when our students transition from us uh, after eighth grade into the high school setting. Okay, we are, we just have a, a few more items to go over in today's presentation. Um, right now we're going to talk about IEPs and ETRs and what that looks like uh, in, uh, in a JB school. And then we'll talk about things such as tuition and scholarships. 
All right, so to start off, um, in regards to your students' IEP and ETR, uh, obviously a very important, important uh, tool, important document uh, for your child, but it's an ongoing document. Uh, it's important to note that your child's IEP continues to be an active IEP here at JB. Um, so we will certainly be uh, providing supports on the goals and the objectives within the IEP. And then when your child's annual IEP comes around once a year, we are very much part of that process. It's important to know that it is your home school district that is still responsible for putting the IEP together. But we do work hand in hand with your school district and the bulk of the information that goes into the IEP comes from our staff here. And so it is, it is our intervention specialists and therapists who are putting together the profile, the goals and the objectives, all the accommodations uh, for your student's IEP. And then we have a director of special education on staff. Uh, her name is Mrs. Vidovian uh, here, in, here in Akron. Uh, she participates in all of the IEPs and ETI meetings uh, for your child, along with you, uh, to kind of walk you through and support you during that process. And then what does it mean to be a scholarship provider? Uh, as I mentioned, we are a provider for the Autism and John Peterson Scholarship. Um, certainly, if you are unfamiliar with those scholarships, um, you know, feel free to give us a call or uh, go on to the Ohio Department of Education website uh, to learn more about those scholarships. Um, but for any child that has an IEP, uh, they are eligible for one of the two scholarships. Uh, if, they have a di uh, if they have a category of disability of autism within their ETR, they're going to qualify for the autism scholarship, um, which is a scholarship of $27,000. If they have any other, categ other category of disability, such as uh, speech and language impairment, uh, specific learning disability, other health impairment, as well as others, um, they're going to qualify for what's called the John Peterson Scholarship. And the amount that is allotted to the student is based on the category of disability. So a student with a specific learning disability uh, amount that they receive from the scholarship is going to be different than a student who has a speech and language uh, category disability. Um, again, another great uh, resource for you is to go on to the Ohio Department of Education website, type in John Peterson, and you can pull up a document that outlines that uh, allotted amount. You can take a look at each category of disability and see what amount would be allotted to your, uh, to your child. Now here at JB, our tuition uh, for this school year is $27,540. Um, and that's all inclusive in terms of all the therapies and supports that we provide. Um, with, the, uh, with the tuition, um, in conjunction with the scholarships, uh, it's important to note that obviously the autism scholarship uh, covers just about almost all of the tuition. Uh, for the students who are using the John Peterson scholarship, your scholarship is going to uh, cover a portion of the tuition and then but we do provide financial aid uh, to our families who are in need and so we do provide nearly almost one million dollars in financial aid um, you know you, you can during the 1920 school year uh, almost one million dollars financial aid so there is a, a substantial amount of financial aid that is provided to our families uh, to help make JB a, a possibility and a reality. A little bit about our graduates and what, what's next for them after eighth grade. Um, we're, we're happy uh, to announce that a lot of our students do go on to other Catholic private schools, uh, such as Beaumont, Cleveland Central Catholic, uh, here in Akron, we have St. Vincent St. Mary's that our, uh, our graduates uh, move on to. Um, so a number of different schools, as well as their, their home uh, public school as well. Uh, when your child is in seventh grade, we start to have that conversation about high school. 
and uh, what those possibilities are. And we certainly want to align uh, your students' strengths and weaknesses and their goals with their high school. Uh, so it is a conversation that we do have. Um, certainly your child has the opportunity to explore and visit high schools um, you know, while they are in seventh and eighth grade. And uh, certainly you'll be making that decision uh, in the second half of the eighth grade year. And then with all of our uh, alumni that has come out of JB, we, we have a wide range of, uh, of, of uh, different professions that our students can move on to, such as anywhere from a doctor to authors to lawyers and teachers. Um, they become strong community members. Uh, we get great recognition from the high schools, uh, recognizing that our students are uh, well-rounded students uh, as they move into the high school setting. A couple of logistical items about our school day. Um, uh, again, as I mentioned before, our school day starts at eight o'clock and concludes at 2.45. Uh, drop off begins at 7.40 and our dismissal procedures end at three. And as I mentioned, aftercare is available from three to 6 p.m. For, uh, for any of our students. We are a uniform school. Uh, students do wear uniforms throughout the course of the week. Um, but then typically on Fridays or the last day of the week uh, is a dress down day for our students. It may be a spear wear dress down or it may be a theme based dress down day. Uh, certainly we would like to uh, provide those days for us. Uh, all of our students do look forward to those dress down opportunities. Lunches are a, uh, is, is a packed lunch program. So uh, we do ask our students to pack their lunches uh, each and every day. We do not have a hot lunch program. Um, but I will say on occasion, uh, we do provide a special hot lunch to our students. And we, uh, we recognize when those days are coming up. Um, but every so often we do like a special pizza hot lunch or a special pasta hot lunch uh, for our students. Uh, again, they always look forward to those, uh, to those days. And then transportation. Uh, transportation is always a big question that we receive. Uh, do we provide transportation? The answer to that is no. Julie Billiard School does not provide any transportation, um, but it is important for you to be in contact with your uh, local school district, uh, just as they would provide transportation to other parochial schools. Uh, there may be an option there for you, uh, for your local school district to provide transportation to Julie Billiard School. Um, but that certainly is a conversation between the family and the transportation department of the, uh, of the local school district. Um, now with, the, uh, with transportation, school districts have certain criteria uh, that the family needs to meet in order to be eligible for their uh, transportation. Uh, so that's certainly a conversation that you would want to open up with your home school district. All right, as we uh, get to the end of our presentation here, I do want to kind of conclude with the application process and what that looks like. Uh, first up, uh, you know, we would ask you to visit our school website and uh, apply online. You'll find our school application online there for you. Um, navigate that process. Um, certainly submit all the supporting documents that are necessary, such as the IEP and the ETR documents. Um, if you are a family that is going to be utilizing the John Peterson Scholarship and will be seeking additional financial aid, um, you'll want to utilize the financial aid application as well um, and navigate that process. Once the application is complete, uh, the application will be reviewed by the administration. And uh, when appropriate, uh, we will set up a screening or a shadow day uh, for your child. Uh, if you are uh, applying for next school year, the 2021 school year, it's important to note that our kindergarten screening always happens in the month uh, at, at the conclusion of February and going through March. Um, so you can expect that, you know, you can, uh, we would uh, certainly recommend 
providing your application to us uh, as soon as possible so that way you're on our list. Um, but know that that screening process would begin uh, late winter, early spring. Um, and then same thing for grades first through eighth grade, if you're looking at next school year. Um, we would be conducting those shadow days um, in the, uh, the second half of the school year, uh, more in the springtime. Now, if you are looking for, looking to enroll your student or your child this school year for the 2021 school year, um, that's gonna be a little bit of a different process. So if you want to apply, uh, we will review your application. Um, but then if there is an opening uh, within the classroom, we will certainly set up a shadow day as soon as possible um, to uh, see, you know, certainly evaluate your student and see if JB has the appropriate services for your child. Once that shadow date and the screening process is uh, concluded, then we will hold what's called the acceptance meeting and finalize the enrollment paperwork. Um, and then have your child start with us here at JB. Um, and then also it's important to note that it is, you know, after the screening and the shadow process, once your child has been accepted into Julie Bay School, that's when you receive the application for the John Peterson or the Autism Scholarship. Um, and uh, that's when you would apply for it. Just know that the scholarship application or the scholarship becomes active uh, the day that you apply. Um, okay. Certainly, you feel free to ask any questions uh, about the application process or the screening process. Feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. Okay, so we have come to the, uh, the conclusion of our presentation. Uh, you know, first off, I, I do want to thank you uh, for being part of our presentation today. I am going to go ahead and answer some of the, quest uh, the questions that are in the Q&A. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, you know, after this presentation, any questions or concerns that you may have, feel free to call us. Uh, we'll be happy to answer those questions for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at our questions that we have. Let me pull them up. All right, so the, the first question that I have is, do you participate in state testing? Uh, very good question. And you know, in regards to, to that response, we have to look at it two different ways because there's mandates in place for two different groups of students. And so if your child is a student who is utilizing the autism scholarship, they are exempt from any statewide testing. Uh, so autism scholarship recipients would not be participating in statewide testing. As of right now, for John Peterson scholarship recipients, uh, they are mandated to participate in statewide testing. Um, the way uh, the rule stands right now is yes, a John Peterson scholarship recipient needs to participate in statewide testing. But I will say there are uh, changes occurring uh, as we speak um, for scholarship recipients, and they are moving in a way uh, that they're, they're looking to accept other testing uh, possibilities uh, in place of the statewide testing. And for an example of that would be our MAP testing that we already do within our setting here. Uh, would suffice the requirement uh, for statewide testing. So that, just know that that's not in place yet, uh, but we are expecting that to be in place very shortly. Our, our next question is for next school, uh, for, ne for next school, for next school year, when do we complete applications to get reviewed and how long does it take to get an answer? Um, so if you are looking to uh, apply for next school year. Uh, certainly, we encourage you to provide your application as soon as possible um, because the classes do fill up. Um, I do have a couple classes that already have a wait list within the setting, um, but then obviously there's classes that have openings as well. 
Um, so do, you know, I do encourage you to submit your applications uh, earlier than later. Um, but then once the application is submitted, uh, the submitted applications are screened and reviewed within two weeks of the application being submitted. And then certainly we'll pro provide confirmation to you that all signs are good and you can expect that we'll be setting up the uh, shadow or screening uh, in the springtime for the next school year. Now, when we go to set up that shadow day in the spring, um, know that it would be about a month in advance that we would notify you of that shadow, uh, of that shadow day. Um, so hypothetically, let's say that we were gonna conduct the shadow day uh, in the middle of March. Uh, know that we would be contacting you mid-February uh, to set that up with you. Okay, so at this time, that looks like that's the, uh, the conclusion of any questions that we have. Um, so again, I would like to thank everyone for participating today. Thank you for being with us. I do apologize that you know, we are in this virtual world right now and our, our open house was a virtual format. Um, but you know, because of that, you know, certainly you know, reach out to us with any questions. And uh, we're excited to uh, continue this, this adventure uh, with you. So thank you again. Have a great rest of your day. And we look forward to talking with you soon. Bye now.